So to understand unconscious racial bias, we need to understand a little bit about how our brains work. Our brains learn through associations. They make quick, unconscious, and automatic associations in response to a stimulus. And the reasons our brains do this is because they're efficient information processors. I'm sure when you walk into a room and you sit down at a chair, you don't spend even a second thinking about that strange object that you're sitting upon because your brains have learned what a chair looks like and what you do with a chair. Your brains do that about everything, including people. And what our brains have learned is that certain people are associated with certain things. So for instance, if I were walking down the street and I saw a young black man that I didn't recognize, my unconscious brain would automatically, quickly and unconsciously bring up all of the associations that it's learned about young black men. Most individuals, regardless of our race, associate young black men with criminality and dangerousness. And even if that unconscious association would conflict with my own conscious, egalitarian beliefs, it would still influence my behaviors, my judgments, uh, my perceptions in ways that I would be completely unaware of and therefore unable to control. Although I myself am a woman and I'm Korean and I'm black, I had all of the unconscious biases that most people of all races have. So many of you may have heard of the IAT, or the Implicit Association Test. When I took the Implicit Association Test, what it demonstrated is that I associated white men with positive things and black men with negative things. I associated women with the home and men with the workplace. And I do not consciously subscribe to these biases, so I don't have an explicit bias, but I had an implicit bias. And that's the difference between the two. So being a conscious racist and having unconscious racial biases are not equivalent things. So unconscious biases tend to influence us in situations that are ambiguous. And so when a situation is ambiguous, your brain will fill in the missing pieces and often it will do this with the unconscious associations that it's learned. And as a result of that, you might treat two people engaged in identical behaviors differently. So these unconscious biases can influence every actor within the criminal justice system, regardless of whether you're a judge or prosecutor, a public defender, or a juror, every actor within the criminal justice system will be influenced by these unconscious biases. So what can we do? If I could leave you with just one piece of advice, and this is going to be the hardest piece of advice, believe me, I know that, it would be to slow down because I know that all of us who act within the criminal justice system want a system that's fair and want a system that's just. And I know many of you are now thinking, I can't slow down, we have too many cases, we have to get through the calendar. I get it, I was in the criminal justice system myself. So slowing down, being aware of the circumstances when you might act on your unconscious biases, obtaining more information are all things that you can do to try to reduce the impact of these unconscious biases on your behaviors and judgments.